Welcome to another inspiring and timely message from our pastors here at the Crossroads. What a beautiful day to be here with you all. I'm so honored. Uh, for those of you that have been with us for the last few weeks, I've been sharing uh, about what I believe is the new Reformation. And this is going to conclude this series. As I mentioned, we have the notes for all of the three teachings outside. So they're little, so you can keep them, and uh, you can look at these scriptures throughout the week. Just to put that first slide, just to remind uh, you all, how many of you, let me ask a question, how many of you remember, know historically uh, about the Protestant Reformation, the Great Reformation a little bit? It took place primarily in Europe and in Germany. It was in 1517, and, uh, you know, things had been, it was a very tumultuous time in Christianity, and there was a man named Martin Luther, uh, who even now the church, the Lutheran church, it comes from him. Uh, he was a founder, and so... Well, the people who came after him were the founders, but he said, hey, there's so much going on, and there's so many things in the church. I want to make it simple. I want to simplify it. So he simplified it to these three points. There was a few more and 95 theses, but we can say that there's these three things. Only faith. He said, we only need faith in Jesus. That's all we need to connect with him. <clears throat> Uh, only the Bible. We don't need these other books where people are telling us to do other stuff. We just need the Bible. And only, only Christ. We, we all have access to Christ. And so this happened 500 years ago, and it shook a lot of Europe, and uh, even to this day, they're celebrating 500 years. And a lot of American Christianity was very influenced by this Reformation, the Puritans and the Moravians and the Wesleyans, the Methodist Church, and a lot of it has sprung forth from this movement. But I believe today God's going to bring a new a uh, fresh breath of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to experience a new reformation. And the, it's very similar to the old one. What I believe is going to happen is, and I've taught on these already, the supremacy of Christ. How in these days, you know, people say things like, well, all religion is kind of the same thing. Just do good. Don't hurt people. And you're kind of, you're in. And so I believe that God's going to show how, you know, Jesus is supreme and he is the name above every name. And we're going to see uh, that Jesus is going to be made popular and famous in these days. Number two, the unity of all believers. The Reformation was a very tumultuous, divisive time because they were such in search of truth that they uh, hurt people and blasted people who didn't agree with them on simple things uh, like communion. We come here at this church once a month, we'll take of the Eucharist, we'll partake of the Eucharist, and we celebrate the presence of God. But 500 years ago, it was so divisive that they said the Eucharist, there was different beliefs. The Eucharist is the presence of God, and it's, it, it's eating, actually eating the flesh and blood of Jesus. And then somebody said, no, it becomes the presence of God when the priest blessed it. No, it's a memory of the presence of God. No, no, it's the presence of God, but it, it was like all these little things, and they divided each other. They, they, they even hurt each other, and they went to war for these things 500 years ago. I believe today that we're searching truth, but we're blanketed by the love of Christ. And we're able to say, you know what? If you take communion the first Sunday of the month or the last Sunday of the month, if you take it every day or every week, we are all brothers and sisters in Jesus. And that divisiveness that was there is no longer there because in the new Reformation, we're going to have a unity with other believers. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, the longevity of the Bible. Back then, uh, there was such a push to print the Bible. This is when the printing press came. So they printed the Bible because they said if people would just read the scriptures, they would believe the truth of the word. Well, here we are 500 years later. We have the Bible in the New King James Version, the Old King James Version, the Newly Revised King James Version, the Newly Revised King James Version for the British, the Newly Revised King James Version for the American, the Newly Revised King James Version Study Bible for women, the Newly Revised King James Study Bible for men, for teens, for children, for the Pentecostals, for Baptists. We have so many translations. But what's happening is that now it's not illiteracy. Now people are saying things like, 
well, you know, that book is an old book and it doesn't really stand today. But I believe that today God is waking us up and saying that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That heaven and earth will pass away, but his promises remain forever. So those first three are the ones that I've shared. Today we're going to look at the equalization, the equalization of the Holy Spirit and how he he makes us all, he brings us all into equality. Uh, let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And the scripture says this, that in the last days, says God, I will pour out my Holy Spirit upon all flesh. Now this began in the day of Pentecost, 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit was poured out on all believers. And it says, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, your sons and daughters will prophesy. I love this because it's saying if they're men or if they're women, they have access to the Holy Spirit. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Now, this doesn't mean that when you're young, you're creative, so you're able to see these visions, but then you get old and, you know, God only speaks to you when you're asleep. No, visions and dreams are interchangeable. And God is saying if you're seven or if you're 77, you have access to the Holy Spirit and he can speak to you. Amen? Seven, you're not 77. I'm seeing some people clap. All right. <laughs> Amen. Young and old and in between, 55 plus, 55 minus. And then it says, on my maid servants and men servants. Now, what does this mean? This means every socioeconomic strata. If you're a servant and you're looked at as a peasant or a laborer, somebody who doesn't have a lot, or you're very wealthy, you have access to the same Holy Spirit. I will pour out my spirit and you will prophesy. And so... The Holy Spirit, especially now in days, there's, 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 there's an unmasking of generations of injustices that have been done. And right now there's a lot of tension here in the United States of America. We cannot act like there's not a lot of tension. But the equalizer, the one who brings everybody together, men and women, every race, every language, rich and poor, the one who brings everybody together, according to this scripture, is the Holy Spirit. And what we need now, more than ever, we need to pray that God would fill us with the Holy Spirit and he would fill our politicians so that we can come in sync. You see, over, this was written almost 3,000 years ago, before, 3,000 years before the current crisis that we are watching now in the news and how there's tension, God already had a solution, and the solution is the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Amen. I heard a preacher say, uh, I, I heard him, I, I was reading it, but I could picture it in my mind, and he said, you know, with all this talk about racism, what we need today is gracism. Amen? That we give grace to people who think different, who act different, who come from a different background, that God would give us grace in these last days. The Holy Spirit is for everybody. And I've heard people say funny things. I've heard people say things like, well, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to be poured out more on the Latin church because the Latin people, are, we're just very, we're very emotional people and we can feel the Spirit. Or, or God can move more in the African church because, because in Africa they're more open to spiritual things. Or or God's going to move more in the Asian church because they're persecuted. I've heard people say things like God can move more through women because women are more sensitive. They're, they're, they're in touch with their feelings and God can work more through women. Or God can work more through men because men are rational and they're logical and God likes to work through logic. You hear these things, but ladies and gentlemen, the truth is, all flesh, all people, all genders, all ages, there is equal access to God for everybody. Amen? I've said it, and I'm going to keep on proclaiming it. I believe that the Church of the Crossroads will be the most diverse place in Laredo, Texas. I believe it. I'm ready. There is a big community of people from Asia here. I'm ready to welcome them. We're ready to welcome them with open arms. There's a big... 
I, I love when I go to Be Belgium. I get to preach in a Filipino church awesome, uh, often. And Filipinos are amazing. That's where I've had the most contact uh, with Asian people. I wish I knew other countries. But Filipino people are amazing. They're like us. Their last name is Santos and Guzman. And they like to say jokes, right? I, they're, I'm ready to receive them. I'm ready to receive the community in Laredo from Africa. There's a professional community from Africa here. We're ready to receive them. I'm ready to speak French with the Africans. I, that, that's, I get to speak French when I meet people from Africa. There's people from Latin America here beyond Mexico, and I believe that we're going to receive them here. So the Holy Spirit is the great equalizer. So we're going to look at some things that the Holy Spirit, that he does when he comes. Okay, so I got e 12 or 13 points, they're out there for you, okay? This is a Bible college teaching, so I want you to stay focused. We have the scriptures for you, all right? Are you ready to hear about the equalization of the Spirit? All right. Number one, he brings order out of chaos. This is what he does. The Bible says that uh, in the beginning that the world was in chaos and formless and void, but the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. The world, the universe that you and I know right now, where the stars are perfectly placed, that they don't come crashing into earth. And they're perfectly placed so that they don't burn us or freeze us. The way God made the gravitational pull so that the ocean doesn't just come and swallow us here in Laredo, Texas. It's perfect and wonderful. But it wasn't that way in the beginning. It was chaotic, but the Holy Spirit was there, and the Holy Spirit is the master at bringing order out of chaos, and it's easy to say, David, you don't understand. I have so many challenges. It's not just my family. It's not just my marriage. It's not just my work. David, it's I have to get the kids, and then I'm struggling at work, and I'm, I'm behind on my mortgage, and they might foreclose my house. David, I don't know how I'm going to make this car payment. David, I'm in a multifaceted issue, and I don't know where to start. Ladies and gentlemen, God is the master at giving a step by step process on how to get out. <laughs> Pastor Sandra preached on this just a few weeks ago when she preached on Hallowed Be Thy Name, that he will give you a step-by-step -step process, and we don't have to have it all figured out. God teaches us like the principle of the manna. He'll give you what you need when you need it. And it's easy on Sunday to already be stressed out about Monday. Well, David, today is good. But tomorrow, I got to go back to work with those weird people. I got that weird boss and that crazy colleague. And it's just, I'm already stressed out. And, and I'm already wondering if the, they're going to pay me on time because they usually don't pay me on time. And I don't know how I'm going to make it through this week because we have a corporate inspection. And it, it's not even Monday. Right? And we've already pre-stressed ourselves out. We've already pre-failed. No, no. God, you're the one who brings me step by step. He will bring order out of every chaos. He has a step-by-step -step solution for every chaos that you are in. Nobody here is ever in such a chaos that God cannot guide you step by step. If the this universe was in chaos and God made this out of chaos, how much more can he do it for me and can he do it for you? Number one, he brings order out of our chaos. Number two, the Holy Spirit will make you a skilled employee. The Holy Spirit will make you a skilled employee. Do you know that the real good employees, you don't pay them? You don't pay your best employees, you don't pay them. What I mean is this, Let's say that you're a $50,000 a year worker, but you make a million dollars for your company. They don't pay you. They give you 50,000 and they get to keep the other 950 for themselves. They don't pay you. You way earned it by 20 times. And one of my goals, one of our goals should be that we should be so good that they don't have to pay us. We make 10 or 20 times what they need. All right, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, one person. Exodus chapter 31. 
He'll make you a skilled employee. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Ur, from the tribe of Judah. I filled him with the spirit in wisdom and in understanding and knowledge in all kinds of workmanship to design artistic works in gold and silver and bronze in all kinds of workmanship. See, and God will give you the ability to be so skilled that you are on your own level. I was, I was at United High School. I see some of the students that got to hear me at United. And I was teaching the students. I said, hey, when you are operating in your creative genius, in the creative genius that God gave you, when you're operating in your creative genius, you are on your own level. And that's why nobody can judge you because it hasn't been done before. And just because something has not been done before doesn't mean it can never be done. See, people, they might say something like, you know, I don't think you can do it, David. It hasn't been done before. Well, pull out your phone and take a picture because it's about to be done. (laughs) Amen? Amen. Our limits, Pastor Norman was sharing earlier, we need to extend our limits. We self-impose limits and say, this is all I can be. This is all I can do. This is as good as I can get. And God is saying, rip those limits open. Let me make you skilled in every kind of craftsmanship. Amen. And the people, I want to encourage you to get around people who will push you to extend your limits. Don't let other people's perception try to keep you in a corner and say, oh, you can never do it. You can never get there. You can never graduate. You can never get that promotion. I'm not operating on your limits. I'm on my own level. See, when you're operating in God's skillful level, you are on your own level. And that's why people can't place you. They don't know where to put you. Because there's no frame of reference. But God, through his spirit, will make you a skilled employee. And when you're operating on God's genius, when you're operating under God's creativity, you can find success anywhere. You can find success anywhere. I remember uh, I was at New York LaGuardia Airport on the day when it was a snowstorm. And 90% of the flights were canceled. Now, LaGuardia is big. Uh, They have a lot of traffic. They have over 12 million flights a year. But this day, 90% of the flights were canceled. Very few people were there. There was this guy shining shoes. He was a master. He, He started, he was putting on a show. He saw there was a lady walking by. He's like, hey, hey, pretty lady. What are you, about an eight and a half? I can hear an eight and a half coming in from a mile away. You coming in to get your shoes shined? There was a line of three or four people waiting to shine their shoes on a day when the airport was almost closed. He, I, I did the math. He charged $5 a shoe shine. Plus, he was getting a $5 tip, so about $10. And he was turning them over every five minutes. So uh, uh, every five minutes, tw- he did 12. 12 times 10 is um, it's a lot. So 12 times 10 <laughs> is a lot. And you, <laughs> and you do the math, and you see everything that he did. I, I did the math one day. I don't know how to do it right now audibly because I did it on my calculator. But the dude could have been making $10,000 a month shining shoes. See, when you're on your own genius, you can find success anywhere. Anywhere. There's the plumber that comes to the house. And it's easy to think, oh, the plumber, you know, let's, let's, let's help him out. Well, he should. <laughs> on Saturday... You see the, oh, the plumber, el plomero. You see him at the country club with his Mercedes playing golf, kicking it on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was trying to pay for my master's. And so you guys might know, I've shared this with you before, but I was a server. I was a server at Applebee's. That was the only job that I had. And I remember they said, how are you so sure you can be a good waiter if you've never done this before? I said, well, I, 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 I worked in the church. I was so convinced, right, that having the spirit was going to help me. And they said, well, okay. Um, and so they, they took me on. And in the beginning, I was, I was, more, like a, I was more like an illusionist. I, <laughs> you, you would order Coke, you got Sprite. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you got the burger. I tried to convince you that the steak was better. I mean, it was, I would disappear. And so... <laughs> 
I was that kind of server, but I remember I was determined because I had the spirit. I was determined. So on my days off, I would walk in almost dressed like this, and the workers knew. They knew, but I would walk in dressed like a manager, and I would just go to the tables and say, is the staff treating you okay? If you need anything, you let them know. That's why they're here. And they were having a good time because in my mind, I, didn't, I, I knew I was here, but I wasn't going to stay stuck there. I would go and I would look at the menu and I would study the menu. And, and I turned into an infomercial. People said, well, what's in the crispy orange chicken bowl? Well, the, the crispy orange chicken bowl has eight ounces of rice and four ounces of broccoli and mixed vegetables. But wait, there's more. If you get it now... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was able to become skilled. And I'll never forget the day came when I was that top server and I was the one helping people and training people. And the day came, I've said the story, but I got the $110 tip. It was a $40 tab and the guy had been there before and he said, sit down. Uh, my wife wants to share something with you. And she said, I, I just feel in my heart that you have this special thing and, and God has a plan for your life. I wanna give this to you. She pulled out a $100 bill and I said, I'm going to cry. And she, and she said, don't do that. And I said, I won't. I won't. Just, I won't cry. <laughs> and I remember. You see, but, but it, it, it didn't start that way, but it can end that way. And just because you started at one position with one pay scale doesn't mean you're going to end there forever because the Holy Spirit will help you have success and rise to the top. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number three, this kind of goes along line with that. The Holy Spirit will give you the ability to gain wealth. This is in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The Bible says, remember the Lord who gives you the ability to prosper, to gain wealth. Why is that important? The reason that's important is because we've been through this or we know people who have been through this who say things like, David, I've been blackballed. David, I've been hurt. They lied about me on my company. I was next in line, and they pushed me aside. David, I went through a tough situation. David, I've gone through a separation. I've gone through a breakup. David, I lost everything I had. But the one thing that was never taken from you when you have the Holy Spirit was the ability. And you, if you went down to zero, you still have that ability to make a comeback. Maybe you ended up in zero because of wrong choices. You got into debt or you got things that maybe you shouldn't have. Whatever the case is, you leave that behind. God, today is a new day. God, but I still have the ability ability to make a comeback. And you see, he gives you that ability to make that return. Whatever you went through, whatever financial devastation you might have faced, it never took away your ability. Amen? Number four, the Holy Spirit will transform you into somebody else. The Bible says that King Saul, he was going to be the first king of Israel. And he said, how can I be the king? I've never done this before. And the prophet said this, when you're walking, the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and you will become a different man. This world is obsessed with superheroes. And I believe that the reason is because there's a desire inside of all of us to stretch our limit farther, to do things that seem impossible. When there's a big superhero movie, you'll see how they make hundreds of millions of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, those are actors, and I enjoy those movies too. The difference between the people at the cinema and you and I is that we're not actors. And the Holy Spirit gives us that superhero ability. And that's why we don't need to accept the labels that other people give us. That can't be done. You can't go there. You know, they've told me, David, you're, you're over the top. I'm not over the top. I'm over your top because I got different limits. Mm -hmm. And you have different limits. I'll never forget a few years ago, I got a phone, last year, last year I got a phone call. My, my booking manager got a phone call from Bahrain. And he said, David, do you want to go to Bahrain? And I said, what's that? And he said, it's a country by Qatar. And I said, where's Qatar? He said, it's in between Saudi Arabia and Iraq. And I said, holy monkey. 
All right, let's do it. I, I, I didn't know. But, but they came looking, and here's the thing, is that uh, God allowed that to happen. He gave me that superhero ability. And I remember my, my driver, when I, he, he, he knew about three words in English. He's like, good afternoon, Habibi. I, I didn't know what Habibi was. He's like, what, what is Habibi? He's like, you are my, like, I love you, my friend, my brother, my darling. So I just walked around Bahrain, good afternoon, Habibi. I, 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 I didn't know. But I was, I, I was operating on what God allowed me to be. And we're going to walk into that Habibi status. We're going to walk into that level where we might not know how we got there. But God will send us there. Makes me laugh because that was always my weakness. School was my weakness. School was my weakness. And, and you know, I love school so much that I was able to take that four-year degree and, and, and simplify it into nine. And that's how much I love school. That's how much I love school. And now, after struggling in school, I still go back to schools. And, and I tell the kids, I was like, hey, uh, your principal used to suspend me, and now he wants to take a selfie with me. But God flipped it around. God is the one who will flip it around. Get ready for the flip. Tell the person next to you, get ready for the flip. Get ready for the flip. Get ready for the flip. Okay, number five. The Holy Spirit makes you capable to do every good work. Look at King David uh, here. Before he was even the king, the Bible says this uh, in 1618, 1 Samuel 1618. It says, Jesse, he's skillful in playing. He's a mighty man of war, uh, of valor. He's prudent in speech. He's a great speaker. He's a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. And look at all the gifts that he had. And ladies and gentlemen, today things are happening so fast. Things are moving so fast that we need men and women who are equipped for every good work. Uh, you know, it's easy to say, I can't do that. I can't learn that computer program. I don't know how to text. I'm not into that technology stuff. No, 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 no. Before you quit, say, God, you can give me the ability. Some people freak out. Hey, can I send you a text? No, 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 no. No, I don't like that technology stuff. It's not tech. We're not sending off a rocket. I just want to send you a smiley face. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I can <laughs> no. We need people who say, this is a new day. I've got to learn a new skill. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to learn. I need, to, I need to relearn. I used to have the skill, but I need to relearn the car wash skill. The last two times I washed my car, uh, two, the, three months ago I detailed it, and the day after they blew stuff all over it. So I waited three months to detail it, and then the day after that hailstorm came to Laredo, I need to relearn that skill. I can't, I can't do that. I, I need to relearn. I need to relearn. There's things that we need to relearn. And, and here's the thing with David that's really cool is David was bivocational. He was serving the king, but then he had to go home and serve his dad. See, so this is good news for the young people, for the young people, the 55 and under crowd. If you're 55 and under, say whoop, whoop. This is for you, the young people. You can do it. If you have to step in there and do a second job or go to night school or whatever, he'll give you the strength. Now, this is for the, the mature people. For the 55 and over, if you're the 55 and over, say whoop, whoop. <laughs> that had even more gusto than the younger ones. I like that. <laughs> for, the young, for, the, for the more mature people, all right? Caleb at 85 said, I'm just as strong now as I was when I was young. I have not forgotten God's promise. Give me my mountain. I think it's funny how as you age, Younger gets older. Like when I was like a teen, I was like, oh, 30. Yeah, that's like over the hill. Now I'm like, yeah, he's young. He's like 70. He's real young. <laughs> as I get older, young, because here's what happens. As you go up in years, you realize that you're still strong. You still are after goals. You're still fired up. You haven't slowed down because God is still with you. Amen? Amen. All right, here we go. Number six. Number six. Are y'all still here with me? All right, we're about halfway through. All right, number six. He'll give you the grace to boldly stand out. The Holy Spirit will give you the grace to boldly stand out. Look at Isaiah chapter 60. The Bible says this, arise and shine 
for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And then it says this, darkness covers the whole earth, but a deep darkness, but the Lord will arise on you. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll give you, bold, he'll give you grace to boldly stand out. And the darker it is outside, the brighter that you and I will display the work of Christ. The Bible says that when wickedness, when tough times abound, his grace superabounds. And God is releasing us. Do not be alarmed. God put this in my spirit. Do not be alarmed of the reports of fear of reports of war, of reports of economic recession or financial Armageddon. Do not be alarmed. I feel like the media wants to control us by fear. I mean, I'm not saying don't see what's in there, but interpret what's happening through the eyes of God's word. Just watch TV for five minutes, all right? And it's like coming up next at 10 the man that she thought she loved was not really the man that she thought she loved. And your kids, they're going to school, but are they really going to school? And is your money really safe? Stay tuned. And you're like, is my money safe? Where is my money? Do I have any money? You start checking your bank app, right? Lifetime. Lifetime is notorious for doing that. If you ever watch Lifetime... You watch one movie, coming up next. She thought it was a dream come true, but it was really a nightmare. Eight hours later, four movies later, three tubs of ice cream later, and a box of tissue later, you're more depressed than when you began. <laughs> and the medicine commercials do this, right? The medicine commercials. Are you tired? Yeah. Would you like a better life? Try Heralpico. Heralpico can help you get your life back on track. And then it has that creepy part where it tells you the side effects. <laughs> Heralpico might make you tired. That's the whole reason you got it. <laughs> Heralpico might make you tired, cause suicide. In severe cases, in-laws have disappeared. <laughs> if, you, if your fingers are missing, contact your doctor immediately. How can I contact the doctor when Heropical made my fingers fall off? Right? But this is what they do. They're trying to grip us. Do not be alarmed. Don't shrink back. Don't Christians will do this. Have y'all ever met like scary Christians? <laughs> There's some scary Christians that tell me, look, David, look at the and they'll pull out a newspaper article. Look, look at what's going on right now in the Middle East. And look at what it says right here in Revelation chapter 4. And this is that we have like seven weeks left. I'm a, well, I, I better make a phone call. <laughs> have you ever have you ever anybody met those kind of people that try to scare you? I had a lady in my church, beautiful, wonderful, great person. And she said, David, I have 87 pages of notes on the Antichrist. I said, look, that's great, but we're not looking for the Antichrist. We are looking for Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> Don't let people scare you. They're going to knock on your door, and they look happy, and they have their kids, and they start giving you magazines, and you know you got four weeks left. Holy cow, let me, let me run up my credit card bill. No, no, no. Don't run it up. There's a good chance we might have more than four weeks. Don't let them scare you. Just stay with Jesus because he's going to let us shine bright. Amen? Amen. All right, we better move because I got like a bunch. All right, number, number seven, the Christ anointing is the restoring anointing. Okay, the next chapter. Um, can somebody come play the keyboard? Because if you start playing, I'll start coming in for a landing. All right? All right, Isaiah 61. Uh, the Bible says this, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty uh, to the captives, to proclaim, just, just the, the keyboard for now, all right, just the keyboard for now, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he goes on to say this, instead of your shame, you'll have double honor. Instead of confusion, you'll rejoice in their portion. You will inherit double. The Christ anointing, uh, has been on the crossroads since the beginning. Restoration is one of the pillars of this church. And I've heard people say things like, 
they've already told me. We haven't even finished February. And they say, David, 2017 is so tough. I thought this was my year, but this is not my year. They've already given up on the next 10 months. They've already given up on over 300 days because something bad has happened in the beginning of this year. Ladies and gentlemen, never, never, never allow self pity to contaminate your soul. Never give yourself, do not give yourself the luxury slash unluxury of feeling sorry for yourself and do not let other people feel sorry for you. Oh, pobrecito, I know you've had a hard time, but it's okay. People do it to me whenever I travel. They say, where are you from? I'm from Laredo, Texas. Ooh. Ooh, I'm sorry. All right, don't be sorry for me. Don't be sorry. Your last name is Garcia. Are you, are you, you can say it. It's not a bad word. I, I'm Mexican. It's okay. It's not, some people like, are you uh, like uh, from the Latino persuasion? Mexican. It's okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm Mexican and I'm American. But ladies and gentlemen, I am also a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And I have privileges from the kingdom of heaven. All right? And I have the Christ anointing. Don't feel sorry for me. Now, when I say these things, it's people might say, but David, uh, you know, you're acting like problems aren't real or like people are not going through real challenges. Listen, I understand that there's real challenges. I understand that many people are frustrated. I understand that some of us here, it's hard to even take this message because it's like, David, you're talking to me and I feel lost like I've never been before. I understand. I understand that injustices happen. I understand that frustrations happen. I understand that you could have been doing everything right and people treated you wrongly. But I also understand that in Christ, he has anointed us for every challenge. The fact that we're going to open blind eyes means that there is blindness. The fact that we're going to heal the brokenhearted means that there are broken hearts. But the Bible says that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. And every year that you and I are in Christ, it is the acceptable and the good year. And for everyone who feels like you've lost something because somebody hurt you, you've lost something because somebody lied about you, you lost something because of your own fault or your own wrongdoings. Ladies and gentlemen, the good news is that the Christ anointing, he promises to restore double. In verse 7, he says, in place of confusion, in place of feeling lost, I will give you double. And this is the anointing and the equalization of the Holy Spirit for everybody. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, I, I'm going to fly through these, take these notes on the way out. And some of you, I believe, well, I know that God has called all of us to do his work. And I believe that in the coming days, you're going to encounter people at work who are going to just share these things. And you can share these notes with them. Say, hey, look at what the scripture says. You don't even have to preach to them. Just share the Bible. The Bible preaches itself. Whenever some people share things with me, David, please, I'm hurting. I just send them a screenshot of a scripture and that's it. That's all. God is going to use us. Take these notes and share them with others. We're going to go through these real fast. Number eight, he'll give you guidance. Okay? He'll make it, I believe in these coming days, he's going to make it hard to miss his will. People say, David, I feel like I missed the plan of God. I missed it for the last two years. I missed it for the last 10 years. No, no, no. He's going to make it so hard that unless you're fighting against him, you're going to miss his will. Don't be afraid of missing his will. The only way you can miss is if you're fighting against them. Is anybody here fighting against the Lord? Then we're good. We're good. Number nine, he's going to make us equipped to be front runner in the arts. I believe that in the church, in this church, are going to come the greatest songs, greatest sermons. Artists are coming forth. Number 10, that mountain mover ability. Number 11, greater things. Just put up Hebrews 11, 49, 39 for me, please. The Bible says that we're going to do greater things greater than even the men and women of the Bible. When you read these stories like Moses and these others, 
where they split the Red Sea and they saw mighty things, God's saying, no, 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 no. What you're going to see in Laredo in 2017 is going to be so much greater. Number 12, he'll give you the energy you need to accomplish the task. Romans 8, 11 says that the power that raised Christ from the cross is going to raise us up. There's such a lack of energy in this world. People even sell it. Hey, for $3, you can buy energy for five hours. I buy it. I go to Starbucks. I do that double, triple, espresso, latte, macchiato, chino. I do it all. <laughs> the venti. I, venti was the best until they told me we have Trenta. As in Trenta, like Trenta, si. Give me the Trenta. I'm ready for the Quaranta. All right. <laughs> I just want to show off that I know Italian. Okay. Uh, doesn't, anyways, okay, that's, okay, let me focus, focus. He's going to give us the energy. I'm so grateful. I don't know if Oscar is here, um, but I went to United High School last uh, Wednesday, and Oscar uh, is such a great student, a part of this ministry. His parents come to this church, and he started asking me since last October. He's the president for the junior class. He said, please come to my school. Please come to my school. I said, if you set it up, if you talk to your principal, I gave him a few things to do. Since October, he was trying. He never gave up. And this last week, I was able to speak there. And it's because he made it happen. He had the energy. Didn't give up. And God's going to give us that energy. He's going to give us the energy. I'm, I'm just going to say this. I, I, I'm just, I'm just, this is, this is me. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm getting ready. I'm getting excited about the fourth service that's going to come here to Crossroads. I'm getting excited. We don't have the energy now, but when we get there, we'll have it. And if we don't, I'll buy some five-hour energy. <laughs> the last one is this. He's going to give us freedom and life in Jesus. There's going to be such a mighty, mighty revival. I'm, I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, there's going to be such a strong revival. Things are going to happen so fast and instantaneously. We're going to see things that usually take months and years happen. We're going to see God expedite his healing power so fast. And here's what happens when a revival comes, is that different groups want to take the credit, or we want to place it on somebody. Oh, the reason it happened is because of the youth group, or it's because you have a great children's program, or because the men's group, or because the women's group. Oh, or when this pastor preaches. Oh, when that pastor preaches. No, 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 no. Let's never, when God starts to move so powerfully, as he already is, and is going to intensify, Let's not pin it on one person or one group. Let's always say, Jesus, thank you. You're using all of us and you are fulfilling the word that in the last days, you would pour out your spirit powerfully on all flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our series and this concludes the message of the equalization of the spirit. Everything I just shared belongs to every one of us we all have access, even if you have, like, not been in church for, like, three weeks or for three years, for 10 years. You say, somebody just brought me here today, and I, I thought it was kind of cool, you know, seeing you say jokes. And, okay, today, right now, this belongs to you if you belong to Jesus. David, I haven't been, like, you know, I haven't really been connected the way I should. This belongs to all of us right now. David, I've been believing this for 20 or 30 years, and I, I've been hoping and waiting. This belongs to all of us. This is the end of the teaching from our pastors. For more information, visit thecrossroads.org or download our app in the App Store. Thank you for listening.